Hi everyone, today my video is going to be on what happened at the 2000 Sydney Olympic Games. So I'm going to get started with a little bit of general info. The total number of athletes was 10,651, with 6,582 being male and 4,069 being female. There were 300 different events in 28 different sports. This was also the first games of the brand new millennium, it being 2000. It was a whole new start to a century of hopefully more Olympic games, so there was pressure for this one to be fairly big. Now premiering sports include the triathlon, taekwondo, trampoline, synchronized diving, women's water polo, women's weightlifting, women's pole vault, and women's modern pentathlon. Total throughout the games, 15 athletes were caught doping in sports including weightlifting, wrestling, athletics, gymnastics, rowing, and cycling. The opening ceremony was also called the best in Olympic history, but if you look back at all the other opening ceremonies, they were also called the best opening in Olympic histories. So really, they're all the best, apparently. So I'm gonna get into sports. I'm not gonna go over what happened at every single individual sport because that's a lot of them. So I'm gonna start with some of the bigger, more well-known sports and do bits and pieces of other interesting events that happened during them. So we're gonna get started with swimming. This was a big Olympic Games for swimming as 14 world records were set along with 38 Olympic records. It was a big reset in the records for swimming and kind of spawned on this new generation of swimmers that were coming in and competing internationally. Now out of 97 medals that were given, the US won 33 of them and Australia won 18. Now leading into the 4 times 100 relay, the Americans had won every single 4 times 100 meter relay for the past 36 years as in America had been completely undefeated in the event since 1964. Now the only competition that could maybe take them down was the Australian men's swimming team. Now this team included Ian Thorpe, a young 17 year old who became known as Thorpedo for the amount of medals that he was winning and how successful he was at the games. A little bit more about him later. During the race, it looked like the Americans were going to win. However, Thorpe, who anchored the race, was able to just edge out the Americans and win the event, defeating the American team and also defeating the American streak and dominance of the event for 36 years at this point. Now, Ian Thorpe was 17 when he qualified for the games. As I mentioned, he was known as Thorpedo and won gold during the 400 meter freestyle, the four times 100 meter relay, and the four times 200 meter relay. All those he also set world records in with the teams and individually. He also won a silver in the 200 meter freestyle and the four times 100 meter medley relay. His performance, he was actually one of the most successful athletes at this games and one of the most decorated swimmers until someone named Michael Phelps came along a couple of years later. Now probably one of the all-time best and one of my personal favorite events at this Olympics and throughout Olympic history is the story of Eric Musumbani. Now from landlocked Equatorial New Guinea, Eric Musumbani qualified for the Olympics through a wild card draw. It was developed to allow nations um, without the big facilities or organizations to get them into different kinds of sports that maybe they didn't quite have access to. And so for a lot of different African countries that was swimming. Now he learned how to swim eight months prior to the games. He had never actually seen an Olympic sized swimming pool before, which is 15 meters. He practiced at a local hotel, which pool was only 13 meters. And he practiced three times a week for about an hour every morning to learn how to swim before the event. In his heat, he became the only swimmer after everyone else false started and was thus disqualified. So in order to win his heat, all he had to do was dive into the water and make sure he actually finished the race. Now, when he was coming back for his second lap, it, it looked like he might not actually finish the race, but with the whole stadium cheering him on, he was able to finish with a time of one minute, 52 seconds and 72 milliseconds. Now, just for comparison, the gold medal was awarded to Peter Van Hogenband with a time of 48 seconds and 30 milliseconds. So almost a whole extra minute on there. On, 
almost a whole extra minute added to that time. So after he finished the race, he became quite an international star and unlikely Olympian. Media named him Eric the Eel and was praised for his ability to learn how to swim um, considering his circumstances and also to represent his country where not a lot of African nations are represented in the sport of swimming, unfortunately. Now in baseball, the U.S. defeated Cuba for the gold for the first time since baseball had been introduced into the Olympic Games. Cuba had won every single Olympic baseball tournament for the past three Olympics. Also a big rivalry between Cuba and the U.S. because the countries don't necessarily seem to like each other too much and they also don't have a great history. So when the Americans defeated Cuba, it was a big deal. In water polo, women's water polo was finally introduced to the Olympic Games after heavy lobbying, particularly from the Australian women's team, amongst other countries as well. But some of these protests included the women showing up in their swimsuits while Olympic organizers were arriving in Australia to check and see how the, comp um, the building for the Olympics was going. Australia would win the women's uh, water polo title as a cherry on top. Growing Steve Redgrave's career at the game crossed over 16 years. The Brit had won gold in the coxless pair or coxless four since the 1984 Olympic Games. He won his final gold at the 2000 Games when he was 38 and became the oldest medal winner in the sport. Also one of the few if not only athletes to win five consecutive gold medals in five consecutive Olympic Games. Elizabeth Lipa of Romania also won her fourth medal in her fourth game. She would go on to win another at the 2004 Olympic Games, also joining the club with Steve Redgaves. In cycling, Lance Armstrong would win a bronze medal in the time trial. However, when everything broke about his doping scandal, that medal was quickly stripped from him and obviously taken away. Now, Leotin Zylard um, of the Netherlands had retired from professional cycling in 1994 due to anorexia. However, she made a comeback for the 2000 Games. She competed in the road race, time trial, and individual pursuit, oh, and also the points race. She would win three golds and one silver for an incredible comeback since 1994. The U.S. won both men's and women's basketball tournaments. Both teams went completely undefeated throughout the entire tournaments as well. Vince Carter's by far most famous dunk, if not one of the most famous dunks in basketball history, was during a game between the U.S. and France. Vince Carter dunked over the seven-foot Frederick Weiss. The French media would call it le dunk de la mort, which means the dunk of death. Now in tennis, Venus Williams would go to win the woman's single gold and then team up with her sister Serena Williams to also win the woman's double gold in the event. She would be the first woman since the 1924 Olympic Games to win the single and the woman's double event in the sport. Now in wrestling, Alexander uh, Carolyn of Russia dominated the super heavyweight division. And when I say dominated, I say that like he did not lose a single international wrestling match for 13 years of competition. At the 2000 games, he didn't even let an opponent score against him and was going straight basically to the gold medal round. Um, in the gold medal match, he was facing off against uh, American Rulon Gardner, um, who had not won any real um, international competitions up to this point. So people predicted that the Russian would take an easy victory over the American. Now in the first round, there would be no points given. However, in the second round, Carolyn made an error that gave Gardner a point. So basically in the third round, what Gardner did is he took advantage of that, went on the defense for five minutes, was able to hold off this 13, year-long world champion in the event and dethrone the Russian in order to get a gold medal in the super heavyweight wrestling division. It's probably one of the biggest upsets within the games and also one of the biggest upsets within the whole competition of wrestling as well. Now to gymnastics. Probably one of the worst things that has happened for women's gymnastics happened at this event. Basically, the woman's vault was set two inches or five centimeters too low, which meant that a lot of 
uh, world-class athletes were making uncharacteristic mistakes when they were going onto the vaults, resulting in many falls, crashes, some injuries. And some of these injuries were actually so severe that had to withdraw from the actual competition. When a um, gymnast actually pointed out that the vault was set too low, they readjusted it, let those who had already gone go again as it was fair that everyone could compete at the same competition level. However, there are some athletes who couldn't because they were so badly injured. This was a huge huge misstep on the organizer's part and was a bit laughable throughout on um, the gymnastics community as well. Andrea Radican of Romania at the games had won the gold medal in the all-around title and in the team event along with a silver in the vault. Now however she did fail a doping test so her gold all-around medal was actually removed from her but the other two stayed as is. Um, she was not banned and she was later not convicted of any personal wrongdoing as she had taken the case to court and the court decided that she had maybe unintentionally or unknowingly ingested something that was a bad, a banned substance. Turns out she had just taken some cold medicine not knowing that one of the ingredients in there was an actual banned substance. She was the first gymnast to ever have been stripped of a medal at the Olympic Games for doping. So the minimum age for gymnasts to compete at the Olympics is 16 years old. However, Dong Feng Zhao of China was actually 14 years old when she competed at this games, but the government had fibbed on her birth certificate and said that she was 17 years old. Now, this Chinese team actually went on with her help to earn a silver in the team event, but once um, they had discovered that her age had been lied about and she was actually still underage, all of her medals were kind of stripped from her and the Chinese team was removed from the competition, disqualified from the event. Later, she would retire in 2001 from gymnastics due to injuries and some issues with her bones. And just to point out, when she did retire, she was still underage to compete at international gymnastics at the age of 15. Now for the big one, athletics. The US won 16 medals, Ethiopia would win eight, with half of them being golds, mostly from middle to long distance running events. There were 193 nations represented. There were nine Olympic records set, but no world records were set at this games. Ella Floss, daughter of Iceland, would win bronze in the pole vault. Making her the only female Olympic medalist from Iceland, one of four Icelanders to win Olympic medals as well. Marianne Jones of the US had won three gold medals and two bronze medals in the games. Gold medals in the 100 meter, the 200 meter, and the four times 100 meter relay, and bronze in the four times 100 meter relay and the long jump. However, she was later disqualified from all of the events after she admitted to using performance enhancing drugs. Now, she was one of the biggest names in the Balco uh, scandal that broke in 2004, which was a San Francisco Bay Area scandal where they discovered that there was a lot of doping involved with athletes knowingly doping and there were some organizations that were basically helping them cover it up. Fortunately, her name was one of the biggest and most well-known names to be associated with it. Kathy Freeman of Australia was chosen to light the Olympic flame at the um, opening Olympic ceremonies as it marked the 100th year of women's competition or women's participation at the Olympic Games. Later, she would win the 400 meter gold medal. She became the second Australian Aboriginal Olympic athlete um, to win a medal after uh, Nova Paris Kneebone won gold in field hockey at the 1996 Olympic Games. After her historic win, she raced around the track holding the Australian flag and the Australian Aboriginal flag. The Aboriginal community in Australia, much like many other Aboriginal or Indigenous peoples in countries, have been marginalized and oppressed throughout their country, particularly Australia's history. So having someone like Kathy Freeman, who would light the Olympic torch at the beginning of the games and win a medal was very significant for her community and for Australian Aborig Aborigine people throughout their country. She would also be one of the only Olympic flame lighters to actually win a medal at the same Olympic Games where they also lit the flame. Pretty random statistic, but it's also a pretty cool one. Now in the marathon, Aguida Amaral came in 43rd place in the women's marathon. Now Amaral was from East Timor, which was going through a 20 year civil war. In 1999, she fled from her home and lived in refugee camps for um, a number of months. When she returned home, all of her possessions had been completely destroyed, including her only pair of running shoes. 
but she kept running barefooted and kept training to go to the Olympic Games and represent herself and her country. Later, the Australian Olympic Committee would give her a pair of shoes for the upcoming 2000 Games. However, East Timor was not able to be represented at the Games as their application to be a official um, represented country um, with the International Olympic Committee wasn't processed um, by the time that these Olympics had started. However, the International Olympic Committee did allow athletes from East Timor to participate at the Olympic Games under um, not a East Timor flag, but just kind of a unified athletes flag. When she arrived into the stadium for her final lap, knowing that she was one of the last competitors, there were other people who dropped out of the race as well, but she was determined to finish the race. She did her final lap around the stadium and she did so um, to a standing ovation by the crowd and of course was very emotional as she crossed the finish line. Now, in conclusion, of course, the IOC had declared the Sydney 20 games or the Sydney 2000 games as the best games ever, as they would for every other Olympic games that has ever happened and ever will happen in the future. It had been the best games ever up to said point. I wonder what they will say about the 2021 20, Tokyo games. <laughs> Overall, the games were highly successful economically, culturally, socially, ecologically, and for the entirety of Australia as well. There are very few places who have held Olympic Games in the past couple of years that have actually utilized all of the structures and infrastructures they have built for the Olympic Games in further competition. Australia has been able to utilize all of these locations, or at least most of the locations, to the best of their ability that they can up until now. Now, this Games was, um, as mentioned earlier, the first Games of the New Millennium, and it was a really, really big reset in a lot of world records and Olympic records for a variety, a plethora of sports throughout the Games. There were many of these new records set, which started the new millennium of Olympic Games and how fast humans could really do anything or throw anything or shoot anything. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video about the 2000 Sydney game. There was quite a bit to cover in it, so I hope I got the best little bits and pieces, the most interesting bits of little pieces that I could from these from these particular games. If you did like it, you can always like it. You can subscribe if you'd like to see other sport history videos from this channel. Um, but until then, thank you for watching. Bye!